Hey you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to first get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, one-on-one -on -one sessions, review books, cue banks, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, my disclaimer and reminder is that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, and any of the questions that you see here, I have designed and created based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any of my videos where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. And before we get into question number one, you know I've been going through a series with you guys to try to help y'all tie together some of these more difficult concepts. And we've been through quite a few so far. We've done our non-clinical. We've done um, antibiotics. We've done diabetes. We just finished our, you know, asthma based off of the GINA guidelines that are being tested on boards. And so this week we will be covering derm okay i want to hit some of these um to make sure you're having a good understanding and i you know me i like to start from the knowledge standpoint so giving you that foundation to make sure you have what you need um uh, from a foundational standpoint so then that you're able to apply it so we're going to start with the derm um terms derm terms <laughs> and then we'll go from there right so question number one states the nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing dermatology description, descriptive terms. Which term is defined as a fluid-filled blister one centimeter or larger? Is it A, a macule, B, a papule, C, a bulla, or D, a pustule? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. Now, y'all know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first as it allows you to slow down to ensure you're answering what is being asked of you. So here, the stem of the question states, which term is defined as a fluid field blister one centimeter or larger? Now here, this is a prime example of how the stem tells you exactly what you need to be addressing and answering, right? The rest of the question is just fluff. It's just telling you, you know, it's just like supportive details that the nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing derm descriptive terms. So which term is defined as a fluid field blister? And your best answer is C, a bulla. Bulla is the term, the derm term, as a fluid field blister and is typically one centimeter or larger, okay? And so I always say to me, Brittany's brilliance, um, when you think of full, like it's full of something, fluid field, it's full and it's a blister. So full with a B on it is bull, like bulla. I know that's crazy, but in my mind, that's what uh, makes it stick. So if y'all can relate, I hope that helps you. But a fluid field blister is also known as bulla. Why is this important to know these terms? Because on boards, they can give you scenarios where they're using bulla, for example, or they may say bullus or non bullus, meaning there is a blister or there's not a blister. And that is significant on how you may treat. Let's think about um, impetigo. So if I'm telling you it's non bullus, right? So there's no blisters here then you can treat with mupirocin, right? We can do something topical, right? Whereas if I'm telling you there is a, there's epitigo, but there's um, a large bullus and, you know, multiple um, bullus noted lesions um, or things of that nature, I'm just saying this off the top of my head, y'all. But that would warrant an oral antibiotic. So you're, you know, you may, then you would bump up to like Keflex or Cephalexin, right? So I want you to know these terms so that if they put these terms in, you're not missing something that you know um, just off of terminology. You know what I'm saying? All right. Question number two. The nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing dermatology descriptive terms. Which term is defined as flat without elevation? An example is like a blemish. Is it A, a macule? B, a papule? C, a bulla, or D, a pustule. Take a moment and tell me what you got. 
All right, so here's some of the question. Which term is defined as flat without elevation, like a blemish? Which one do you think? And the best answer is A, a macule. Y'all know Brittany's brilliance on this. And if you've ever watched any of my derm videos, I always tell you, I think of macules like, you know, how we wear MAC makeup. Like, well, I should say we wear it, but MAC is a makeup um, company, right? M-A-C. And we apply makeup to cover blemishes, right? So macule is a blemish. I use my MAC makeup to cover the blemish. All right. And lastly, question number three. The nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing dermat dermatology descriptive terms. Which term is defined as a small, less than one cent centimeter elevation? Example is a pimple. Is it A, a macule, B, a papule, C, a bulla, or D, a pustule? Tell me what you got, y'all. All right, so stem of the question, which term is defined as small, less than one centimeter elevation? like a pimple, and this is B, a papule. Now, papules are small, less than one centimeter, and it's elevated, right? But pustule would be elevated, but it would be fluid-filled with like pus. You know what I'm saying? So this is how you will be able to differentiate one versus the other, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. And if you need any other resources that I do offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. The things that I do offer are my review book. You can get it in an ebook or paperback option. They're both linked in the bio of this channel. If you are someone who prefers to study independently, the self-paced review course is also linked in the bio of this channel, and it is designed for family and adult general reviewers. If you are looking to complete practice questions to test your knowledge, you want more in the style of how these questions are along with feedback, I do have um, the rationales explained in video just like this. Um, the link for my QBank is also in the bio of this channel. And as always, if you're looking to book any one-on-one -on -one sessions to work with me, then I always say either call, text, or email to the provided stuff on the screen so that we can gauge what you truly need because I offer a variety of one-on-one -on -one sessions and I prefer to speak with you guys to gauge what is truly needed for where you are in your board preparation to make sure that, um, that you book the appropriate session for your needs, okay? All right, you guys, as always, y'all know what to do. Make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.